Yes. So I, I touched very briefly on that. The, my thinking on the global car carbon price is from an um, economic principles point of view because the externality that emissions produce is a global externality. It doesn't matter where it is produced and because the goal is to internalize the externality, you want a global uniform price that reflects the shadow cost of the, of the externality. So the economic principle there, I think, is clear. The, we also heard this morning from the keynote that focusing on a uniform carbon price that an agreement on that uh, might actually be easier. That's also a, a, another strong argument in favor. The, the, the big caveat, however, in, it seems to me, is um, that uh, the notion of a carbon price in practice is an abstraction because there's no, there's no one there measuring uh, emissions and then deciding on, and here's how much you have to pay because you've emitted so much. It's not like with water. If you have a water tax, you know, how much water you use as a meter, uh, it doesn't work like that with, with carbon emissions. Carbon emissions are imperfectly measured, the original source, and so they get, often get taxed indirectly. So you have, for example, gasoline taxes. That's a carbon tax, but it's, not, it's with a different name. And then when you, when you go to that level of detail, which activities get taxed by how much, it gets too complicated to then bring back to this idea of a simple, uniform, global carbon tax. Yes. That's um, uh, a very hard question because a, a major part of that question it, it relates to uh, tipping points. As a number of people have alluded to uh, this morning, um, what's the point of no return when we have uh, pumped so much CO2 in the atmosphere that we'll lose control of climate dynamics, it becomes irreversible. The climate damage becomes irreversible. There's a lot of uh, science suggests that uh, such a tipping point exists, but where it is exactly is not is not perfectly known, and um, that's a major reason why um, the economic risks linked to climate risk are not well understood because they, they depend so much on what you think about what, what the tipping point is, where it is, and what, how, it should be, how it should be addressed. So what, uh, what the market can tell us is um, the compensation for risk that um, you want, if you want, society requires for bearing that risk. And um, that's a very helpful uh, piece of data that we can get from the market. And um, there are now a number of studies that are identifying the risk premium and how the risk premium, may, you know, how does it apply to climate risk and how do you separate out climate risk from other risks? Well, that's a very interesting area uh, of research.